Today we're going to be talking about church security. How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Pilot Patriot channel. Now as you can see I'm standing in front of my local church and that's because today we're going to be talking about church security. Now this is going to be a two-part series and we're going to talk about how to build a security team, what kind of threats you might face and how to identify those, how to use a security team to effectively protect your church, and also what kind of gear you might need that can help you do that. It's an unfortunate reality that in today's world our houses of worship have become targets for evil people. And part of the reason is, is that churches are often seen as soft targets. In the past few years alone, we've seen several examples of churches being attacked. The most recent, of course, being the church shooting in Texas, where a man armed with a shotgun entered the church and shot two churchgoers. Luckily, in that case, there was a security team in place and there were several armed people in the congregation that were able to stop the bad guy before more lives could be lost. Now, the Bible tells us that the Lord is our shepherd and we are his flock. And in my experience, there are three types of people. There are the sheep, which are just the average people trying to live their lives in peace. This would be the congregation that's there just to learn more about God and to seek guidance from the shepherd. And then there are the wolves that live to take advantage of others and to do harm to others. These are the type of people that could walk into a house of worship and murder innocent people. And then there are the sheepdogs. Now they're led by the shepherd too, but they are the protectors of the flock. These are the men and women that choose to stand up for the sheep and to help fight off the wolves. So that's who I'm talking to today. If you and your church are interested in building a security team to help protect your church, I'm gonna help you figure out exactly how to do that. Now, if you like these kind of videos, guys, and you wanna see more like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Give us a thumbs up, we really appreciate that. And hit that notification bell so you get notified every time we upload new videos. All right, guys, now before we get started talking about how to build your security team, make sure you consult a lawyer to make sure you're following your local and state laws before you do any of this. Now, the first thing to think about when you're building your security team is what kind of people you want on your security team. And I definitely recommend doing some kind of background check on each member just to make sure you're good to go there. These should be men and women that are able-bodied and able to react to a threat if something comes up. You have to remember that not every threat is going to be an active shooter. Sometimes you may come in contact with a physical encounter that you have to take care of, and you need to make sure you have people that can really handle themselves in that type of situation. They should also be well-trained. Now, we're Southern Baptists, and on any given Sunday, we may have 10 or 12 people in the congregation that are carrying a gun. But you know just as good as I do that just carrying a gun isn't good enough. You need to be well trained so that you can use that gun safely and proficiently. In a church setting there are a lot of innocent bystanders and the last thing you want is to injure an innocent person while you're trying to save people. Now as far as training goes I definitely recommend that each member of your team at least have a concealed carry permit that'll show that they at least have some basic knowledge and some basic training on how to use their firearm. But as a team, you should also have regularly scheduled training sessions and practices where you actually go out and shoot your firearm. You could set up different drills that can mimic certain situations that you might see in a church. And there are a lot of organizations out there that can assist you with that. You could reach out to your local sheriff's department or one of these other organizations that will actually come into your church and actually walk through with you all these different types of scenarios and how you and your team should react to those. Now, it's also each team member's responsibility to make sure that they're going out on their own and practicing and maintaining their skills so that if, God forbid, they did have to act and use their firearm to save the congregation, that they'd be able to do that effectively. Now, as you're choosing your team members, you may want to look at your church body. Are there any military or uh, law enforcement members that may be interested in joining the team and helping you out? And you may even have a set requirements or a certain skill level that your team members have to reach to even be on the team. That's something to think about. But also remember that your team doesn't have to be totally made up of gun-toting commandos. You also need people that are trained in first aid so they can respond to medical situations. 
possibly a nurse or an EMT or a fire department member that's in your church that doesn't mind helping you out on the security team with that type of thing. You may have someone that's in charge of communications and being in charge of making sure that all your equipment is kept up and making sure that if something does come up that there's someone there that can call 911. Now if your team is going to carry a gun, you need to decide if that's going to be concealed or open carry. Personally, I prefer concealed carry. Now it is very likely that most of your congregation is going to be very pleased to have a security team on staff and they're going to be very thankful to have you there. But keeping your gun concealed will also help to keep the rest of them from feeling uncomfortable. Now open carry has advantages and disadvantages. Um, obviously if your gun is out in the open it could help deter that bad guy from even coming into your church but at the same time it could make your security team his first target. So the next thing you need to do is determine how many people you need on your security team. Now this is something that may be different depending on your church. Are you a small church of just 200 uh, members or are you a large mega church with thousands of members? Regardless, you need to determine what your need is and you can do that by thinking about what your threats are, thinking about things like how many entrances you have, how many buildings are on your church campus, and what the roles of each of your security team members might be. Now ideally you'll have some type of hierarchy to your team. Your number one man is going to be your pastor. You're going to want to make sure that he's involved in the implementation of a security team. He's going to be the one that normally oversees all the different church committees. And ultimately all of your security team decisions are going to flow through either the pastor or the deacons or something like that. But your pastor is weighed down with a lot of different responsibilities. So underneath him you're going to need a security director. That's the guy that's in charge of the entire security team as a whole. He's the one that calls the meetings, he makes the big decisions, he decides who's on each team, he decides ultimately who you recruit to the security team. Your security director is going to oversee the general needs of the security team and report directly to the pastor. Now you may decide to split your security team up into smaller groups. For example, you might split your whole security team up into four teams of four and each team is responsible for a specific Sunday, like first Sunday of the month, second Sunday of the month, that kind of thing. So by doing this, you can make sure your security team members aren't getting burnt out on it, and that at least three Sundays a month, they can still participate in regular services instead of being on duty. So assuming you have teams of three or teams of four, you're gonna need at least 12 to 16 people total for your security teams. And I really think that's a great way to do it. So assuming you did that, you're also going to need individual team leaders. These are going to be the guys that are in charge of reminding each security member when they're on duty. They'll be in charge of finding somebody to fill in if someone can't make it that Sunday. And most importantly, they're going to be in charge of assigning each team member's post during services. So whether you be at the front entrance or the back entrance or in the children's area or something like that, they're going to be the one that determines who goes where and who does what. Your team leaders are going to be the first ones to arrive on Sunday morning, the last ones to leave. They're going to be the guys that make the decisions on how the team responds in certain situations. So you have the pastor, then under him you have your security director, then your security team leader, and then you have the rest of your security team. Now I really think that once you implement a security team, you're really going to start seeing a lot of gratitude from the members of your congregation. They're going to come up to you and they're going to tell you how much safer they feel with you being there. And that is a good thing. Uh, we want people when they come into the church to be able to worship and to be able to get their lesson without being in fear of something happening. Um, and that's the whole purpose of having the security team in place. Now once you've built your security team and you have your team of sheepdogs that are ready and willing to protect your church, you want to make sure that you have the proper tools that will assist you in that goal. Now this is how I dress on a regular Sunday, just a button up and jeans, maybe a jacket. And I'm going to show you exactly what I carry with me when I'm on security duty. Now if you're interested guys, I will put links to all these things in the description below so you can get them for yourself. But first things first is your firearm. You want to make sure that you're carrying a firearm that you shoot well, 
that you're comfortable with and that has a pretty good capacity so that you can react to whatever situation might come up. Next is your holster and you just want to make sure that you have something that's comfortable and that works well with whatever you're wearing. You may decide to carry a backup gun. I often do. I'll have my primary um, right here on my hip and my backup gun is going to be in an ankle holster on my ankle. So that's something you may want to think about having a backup option. But like we talked about earlier, not every threat is going to be a threat that has to be handled with a gun. So you may want to think about carrying a non-lethal option, maybe something like pepper spray or something like that um, that can help you neutralize a situation without it turning into a deadly situation. Something else you want to think about is carrying a good flashlight. So not every service is Sunday morning. Uh, most churches have something Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday nights, and then obviously there are all kinds of other activities going on on the church grounds throughout the week. So if you have security that's on duty and it's not during the day, you want to have a flashlight that if you are on duty uh, during one of those nighttime services or something like that, you can still perform your duties and still be able to see what's going on. A flashlight's definitely going to help you out with that. Next is something that's very, very important for a security team. Uh, you always want to make sure you have good communication that each team member is able to communicate with each other if something happens and also just to let them know what's going on during services. So you want to make sure you have a good radio. I recommend the Midland GXT 1000s. That's what we use. Uh, they have a great battery life. Uh, they have a great range. We've never had any issues with them. Um, and that's just going to let you keep in contact with your team members so you're always prepared if you need to call in for backup or something like that. Now with radios, you want to make sure that you're not disrupting services. You don't want to be in the middle of the Lord's Prayer and your radio goes off. So um, what I recommend is something like these security headsets. Um, it's pretty low profile and it's going to allow you that benefit of keeping communication with your team while also not drawing too much attention to yourself. You, remember, as a security team, you want to kind of blend into the congregation. You may want to be just mistaken as an usher or a greeter or something like that, but really behind the scenes, you are standing back, you're scanning for threats, and you're protecting the congregation. So now that you know how to build your security team and you know all the gear that you might need, in part two, we're gonna be talking about what kind of threats you need to be looking out for, where to position your security team, how to react to certain situations, and what kind of tactics you can implement to handle a threatening situation. So make sure you stay tuned for that, guys. If you follow us on Patreon, you will be able to see part two right now. Uh, for the rest of you guys, part two will be posted a week from when this video is posted. So make sure you stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If your church is interested in building a security team, I hope this helps you out figuring out exactly how to do that. Now, if you guys have any suggestions or anything that I missed, please let us know in the comments below. And don't forget, guys, if you haven't yet, make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time we upload new videos. And if you want to help support the channel, you can do that by following us over at Patreon or Facebook or visiting pilotpatriotapparel.com to get yourself some really cool patriotic and Second Amendment t-shirts. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe, and God bless.